welcome back to Bella's Books. Please like and subscribe for more content and follow my Instagram at Bella's Books and check out my website www.bellasbooks.co.uk. This is the study guide for Antigone by Jean Anouy. Down below is linked the written copy of this study guide and the quizlet where you can test yourself on symbols, characters, themes and quotations. So let's get started. Antigone is originally a tragedy by Sophocles, the Greek playwright, from 1441 BCE. It was first performed in Athens in ancient Greek. Jean Anouy's adaptation of Antigone was first performed on February 6th of 1944 in Paris. He rewrote the play for the oppressive time he lived in, inspired by its message of rebellion. This version of the play was originally written in French. It was performed under Nazi censorship as the Nazis were occupying France at the time. As such, Antigone's rejection of King Creon's authority is ambiguous. However, there are clear parallels between Antigone and the French resistance and Creon and the Nazi government. This play, because it was originally written in ancient Greek, is set in Thebes in ancient Athens. Before we get into the summary of the play and talking about the characters and everything, we first need to understand what happened before the start of Antigone. Before the play begins, two brothers, Eteocles and Polynices, died fighting over the throne during Thebes' civil war. These brothers are the sons of Oedipus, a Greek figure that you might have heard of. He was a tragic hero with the fatal flaw of hubris, believing that you're godlike. He eventually accidentally fulfilled a prophecy that he would kill his father and marry his mother. He eventually was blinded. At the time that this play begins, Creon is now the king, and he's decided to honour Eteocles and posthumously punish Polynices by denying him an honourable burial, leaving his corpse on the battlefield to be eaten by vultures. So before we get into a summary, I'm going to go through the characters and talk you through who everyone is. So the protagonist is Antigone. She's the sister of Polynices and Ismene. She's the heroine who wants to uphold her father's honour. She defies Creon's orders to leave Polynices' body unburied despite the consequences and eventually dies. Ismene, Antigone and Polynices' sister, she's the complete opposite of Antigone. She's considered more beautiful, she's obedient and lawful, and she doesn't want to bury Polynices because she's afraid of Creon. Creon, the antagonist, the current king of Thebes, and he's a tragic hero. He loses everything because he prioritises what he believes is right. Eurydice, Creon's wife, appears only at the end of the play when she commits suicide after hearing that her son has been killed. Haman, son of Creon and Eurydice, is engaged to Antigone. He tries to support Antigone, but Creon refuses to listen to him. When he finds Antigone dead, he kills himself because he truly loves her. The nurse looks after Antigone and Ismene, but has no idea that Antigone was capable of defying the king's orders. The guards. They're not bad guys, but they work for Creon, and they're fine with carrying out bad orders. They enforce laws and don't question them. And then we have the chorus, who's played by a single man who kind of serves as a commentator and a narrator. So I'm going to go through a summary now, and it's going to be scene by scene, just a general telling of the events. First of all, the chorus introduces the characters in the plot and explains the recent war between Eteocles and Polynices, who are fighting over the crown. Both die and Creon becomes king, as I mentioned before. He celebrates Eteocles and refuses to bury Polynices. Antigone is then seen sneaking home in the early morning and caught by her nurse. Antigone claims she had a rendezvous with her sweetheart, but eventually the nurse realises that this isn't true at all. Ismene then comes in and warns Antigone against trying to bury Polynices, but we're beginning to suspect that something fishy is going on, and in fact Antigone already has buried Polynices. Haman then comes to visit Antigone, and Antigone says that she can't marry him anymore. Haman leaves, upset. Ismene again warns Antigone against trying to bury Polynices, highlighting the importance of loyalty to King Creon and all of Polynices' negative traits. At this point, Antigone confesses to the audience and to Ismene that she's already buried him. Creon learns from a guard that Polynices has been buried and a toy shovel left behind. He commands the guard to keep it a secret because he doesn't want to lose face. Antigone is then caught and taken to Creon. Creon begs her to renounce her actions and Antigone refuses. Creon then begs her to marry Haman and Antigone refuses. Creon is saddened and frustrated. Antigone antagonizes Creon, say that five times fast, leading to her punishment, burial in a stone cave until her death. Creon tells the chorus that Antigone wanted to die for her actions and there was nothing he could do, while the chorus tries to convince him that there are still other courses he can take. Haman then begs his father Creon to have mercy on Antigone and says that he doesn't consider him a good man anymore. 
Antigone then has a guard write a letter to Haman. As the cave is being sealed, a messenger and the crowd watching hears cries coming from inside the cave, which aren't Antigone's. They open the cave, they tear down the rocks, and they see Antigone hanging dead. Haman is there, crying. Haman tries to stab or assault Creon before killing himself, stabbing himself in the stomach. Creon grieves, and the chorus tells him that everything will only get worse. And that's when you learn that Eurydice, Creon's wife, has killed herself. Creon leaves to go to a meeting, saddened, but doesn't seem to have learned much. So the key Greek literary feature that Ennui continued from the original Sophocles play is Hamasha. Hamasha is the tragic hero's fatal flaw that leads to his downfall. Creon, despite being the antagonist, is the tragic hero. His fatal flaw is his pride and arrogance. He refuses to relinquish his decree and so loses everyone he loves to suicide. The gods punish him for this flaw, but at the end of the day, the chorus suggests that Creon will learn from his punishment. I'm now going to talk about the themes, the ideas which reoccur throughout this play. The first and the biggest one, which you probably have noticed already, is that of civil disobedience. Creon claims that whatever he says is law, and to go against him is to go against justice. He believes that as the ruler, he cannot be wrong in his delivering of justice. In contrast, Antigone believes that Creon's law contradicts the traditions of the society of Thebes. Therefore, her burial of her brother is not only a personal choice, but, but is civil disobedience. She is directly disobeying the law. Antigone's standards of divine justice clash with Creon's will as head of state. There are standards for right and wrong that are more fundamental and universal than the laws of any governing body. The next theme is suicide or tragedy. So Antigone, Haman and Eurydice all commit suicide and Polynices and Etiocles make decisions which cause their deaths. The frequency of suicide and death suggests that life is tenuous and taking one's own life is acceptable. We might want to consider this question. Are suicide and self-injury the only way that characters in Antigone can influence their destinies? The next theme we're going to talk about is women, and this obviously runs throughout the play because the main character is a woman. Antigone is the focus, she's the title of the play and she's the protagonist. As a woman, she's a second class citizen and Creon has overlooked her capabilities and her resilience. While Ismene submits to the patriarchy, we can see that Antigone opposes the patriarchy. Antigone is described as very unfeminine, while Ismene is very feminine. We might see their femininity as the embodiment of their differences. There's also a strong theme of sibling rivalry running throughout this play is mainly an Antigone rival one another with their opposing views and looks. Their rivalry results in Antigone's status as a heroic figure. Ismene might be subservient but Creon's unjust decrees are worth standing against. We might also consider that the impetus for the events of this play is a sibling rivalry. Polynices and Etiocles fighting one another for the throne, a fight that resulted in both of their deaths. There's also a strong theme of family love. We see that Antigone loves her brothers more than anything else in the world, and Creon and his wife both love Haman. We also see, surprisingly, Creon love Antigone. He does attempt to kind of save her or give her some kind of freedom, but he doesn't love her siblings, her brothers, enough. He loves his crown and his power more than he loves his family. The final theme that is really important is that of fate. Throughout the play, many things are described as inevitable, and there's this kind of idea that once put in motion, there are events which are unstoppable and cannot be changed. We might want to consider whether this is actually true. Are any of the things that happen in Antigone actually unstoppable? Or could they have been stopped, but the people with power didn't want to stop them? This play is really rich with symbols, and symbols are characters, settings, or things which represent bigger ideas. So first of all, we have the chorus. The man symbolizes the people and commentates on the actions. In ancient Greek tragedy, the chorus would have been a group of men who served the same purpose. The stone tomb. The stone tomb Antigone is sealed in symbolizes that Antigone's loyalties are not with the living but with the dead, her dead father Oedipus and her dead brothers. The Grey World. Mentioned by Antigone at the start of the play, it symbolizes the afterlife she's destined towards. Creon's physical attack. Creon assaults Antigone, twisting her to his side, but Antigone can't feel the pain. This moment symbolizes that Antigone can no longer be affected by human governance or power. Knitting. 
Eurydice's knitting symbolises her life, and when she stabs herself, she stops knitting and she dies. The guards. We might consider that they symbolise the Nazis or the Nazi guards. Considering that Anne Weave wrote the play during the Nazi occupation of Paris, the guards' blind obedience to their leader might represent the blind obedience of Nazi soldiers, who weren't necessarily bad men, but men who followed bad orders. The final symbol to think about is the sinking ship, and this is used by Creon when he's talking about his city, Thebes. He considers himself the captain of the ship, which is going down, and he can't stop the ship from going down, but it is going down nonetheless. I'm going to end with asking you some questions about this play for you to go away and answer and brainstorm. Maybe you can make a mind map for each question and just kind of develop your critical thinking skills about this play and get you ready for writing an essay or taking an exam on this play. So first of all, what burial does Polynices deserve? Whose actions are justified, Creon's or Antigone's? To what extent are the characters in control of their own fates? How important is the chorus to the effectiveness of the play? What message does the play suggest about tyrant rulers? The ending is somewhat ambiguous. Do you think Creon has changed his ways and become less tyrant based on his experience? How does this play exemplify French resistance to the Nazi regime? So I hope this video has really helped you get to terms with Antigone by Jean Anouy. Remember that this play is different from Sophocles' original Antigone, so if you're studying that one you might want to find a different study guide, or you can leave a request in the comment down below and I will get to that play eventually. And don't forget the link down below is the Quizlet so that you can study for your exam or your essay, and the written version of this study guide if you would like to have a look at that over on my website. Have a great day, please don't forget to like and subscribe if this video helped you, and bye bye!